And now I'd like to introduce you to Lisa Ritchie, one of the top etiquette consultants in the country. Lisa will talk to us a bit about dining etiquette so that we can conduct ourselves in a professional manner when we're sitting at a meal. Lisa Ritchie. Hello, I'm Lisa Taylor Ritchie, and I am the founder and president of the American Academy of Etiquette. We teach children and adults from all walks of life social skills. Today we're going to focus on dining, which is a very important aspect as you move into your adult life and into your careers. We're going to discuss all aspects of a casual setting as well as a formal setting in dining. Today you can see that we have a formal setting here in front of us. We have the bread plate with the butter knife and the bread, a salad fork, a dinner fork, of course our dinner plate, a napkin, dinner knife, and a spoon. At the top of the table setting, we have a dessert setting, which is the fork for cake and a spoon for ice cream. You will also see here that I have a butter plate with butter, salt and pepper shaker, a bread basket, wine glass, water glass, and in different situations, you will either have a coffee cup and saucer set at your table setting from the beginning, Oftentimes, in more formal settings, the coffee cup will be served with dessert. For starters, I'm going to demonstrate the beginning of the meal. And at the very beginning of the meal, as you sit down, the first thing that you do is you take the napkin and you put it in your lap. The napkin is all taken away from the table. It's unfolded underneath the table and the napkin goes in your lap. And I'm going to stand up so you can see the fold of the napkin goes toward my waist. And the reason being is you take the corner of the napkin and use it to wipe your mouth. And then it goes back underneath the table. That is great napkin etiquette. Now, I often get this question, and I'm at business functions all the time and it never fails if I'm sitting at a table of eight or eleven people it never fails someone always eats from the wrong bread plate or uses the wrong wine glass or water glass so the absolute easiest way for you to remember where your bread plates located is BMW and we all know about a BMW and the way that translates you have your bread your meal and your water Again, that's BMW, bread, meal, water. I promise you'll never forget it. So the correct way to eat bread, and again, we're going to visualize that we are at a, a, a table of maybe, let's say, um, five to six people. So this may be past. So as I'm past the butter, I take a small amount of butter with my butter knife, and I place it on my bread and butter plate with the knife, the butter knife, at the top of the plate. I continue to pass this on around the table. Now here is another common dining mistake. A lot of times people will slice their bread and butter the whole piece of bread. And actually it's one bite-sized piece at a time. So I'm going to demonstrate for you. You tear off one bite-sized piece of bread at a time, and you butter that piece over the bread plate, and you take a small amount of butter using your butter knife, and see how this is shaped somewhat, it's, well, it's actually much smaller than, let's say, and I'll show you here, a dinner knife. If this is all that you're given in your social situation, this is perfectly fine, and it will do. But often you will see a, a butter knife at your place setting. So you take a small amount of the butter, you place it on a small bite, and you take the bread one bite-sized piece of a t at a time. And that is the correct way to eat bread and butter. I'm going to demonstrate American and Continental style dining. And believe it or not, one of the most common mistakes that I see, one of the most common dining mistakes that I see is the way individuals hold their fork and knife. And I want to clear up the difference between American and Continental style dining. Many believe that it is absolutely correct to combine the two methods, and it really isn't. So first I'm going to go over American style dining, and this is actually still the most popular way 
that we as Americans eat. The easiest way to remember how to hold your fork or to cut your food correctly is, and this is very elementary, but it absolutely works. If you hold out your palms, you can balance your fork and your knife on your index fingers. And this will make sure that you are in the absolute correct cutting position. So you see it's balanced on my index fingers, you turn it over, and you're absolutely ready for a perfect cutting position. And here we have a nice chicken breast, so I'm going to cut into the chicken. The knife goes at the top of the plate, the blade faces in toward me, I switch hands. Now I'm demonstrating for a right-handed person today. So I switch hands, my left hand goes into my lap, and you can see that I'm holding my dinner fork like a pencil. And that is the easiest way to remember how to hold your fork. Now I'm going to show you some incorrect ways to hold your fork and things that I see as I teach. A lot of times I see this. This is absolutely incorrect. So make sure that you're holding your fork like a pencil. And therefore, you're ready to take a bite. I'm going to show you now the resting position for American style. And the way you put your utensils when you're resting, let's say you need to take a drink or you need to use your napkin, the resting position in American style dining is actually, again, the knife is at the top of the plate, the blade faces me, your hand, your left hand is in your lap. Remember, I'm demonstrating for a right-handed person. So your knife is at the top of the plate, blade facing in. This is another common mistake. I often see it here, but it does face you. The blade faces you. And then the fork is placed below the knife with the handle on the right-hand side. And like I said, this gives you an opportunity to take a sip of your water or to, say, take a sip or um, to use your, your wine your wine glass. Now you may also use this as an opportunity to use your napkin. And again, you take the napkin from your lap and just uh, wipe your mouth as, ne as necessary. The other style of eating is called continental or European style of dining. And it's very important that you know this as well. Let's say, for example, you are invited to an international luncheon or you may have some opportunity to do business in another country. So it's very important that you recognize continental style dining, and I encourage you to try it. It's a very elegant, quiet way, and a very sophisticated way to eat. Again, you start in this position. It's a little elementary, but at least you know you're cutting correctly. You balance, if you're right-handed, you balance your fork in your left hand on your index finger. You take your knife and balance it on your index finger on the right hand. You turn them over and you cut your piece of meat or, or vegetable. And instead of switching, you actually keep the fork and the knife in your hands. And if you'll notice, my wrist actually rests on the table. And that is absolutely correct and proper when you're eating European style. So uh, you can take your chicken. I'm sorry, I actually lost it. You can take your chicken and the tines stay down on the, on the fork when you bring the chicken or your vegetable to your mouth. And as you are chewing, you keep your wrist above the table and you continue to talk and have a great conversation with those that are at your table. Now the other great thing about European style dining is you can take many flavors onto your fork and I'm going to show you how to do that. The knife is considered the pusher. So let's say for example I would like to take a bite of chicken and I happen to be a real foodie and I'm sure we have others out there that enjoy your food and you also let's say want to try a bite of these great roasted potatoes. So you can actually take the roasted potatoes and push it on up to your fork onto your fork so you get a great bite of both the chicken and the potato and you take it into your mouth. And that is a perfect example of European or continental style dining. Now resting position for continental or European style is actually toward the bottom of the plate and it is actually crossed. The knife and the fork are crossed 
And again, remember the diff one of the major differences between American and European style dining is the placement of your hands. It's perfectly acceptable in European or continental style dining to have your wrist above the table. So let's say your, your utensils, remember, are crossed. The fork is on top, the knife is on the bottom, and again, the blade is facing toward me. Again, this gives me an opportunity to use my napkin to finish a conversation or to engage someone in a really deep level of conversation. And it's okay to lean in a bit if that's necessary. It also gives you the opportunity to take a sip of water and you just simply pick up your utensils again and go on with your eating. Now, in American style dining, the if you're at the very end of your meal, we're going to discuss the very end of your meal now, it is actually placed toward the bottom. And the easiest way to remember this, if you can visualize a clock, and 10.20 on the clock, if you can look at your dinner plate, this is the easiest way to remember 10.20 on the clock. So this is actually the correct way for both American and continental style dining. Sometimes you may see times down, which is perfectly acceptable in both eating styles, but also here in the United States, you mostly see tines up. And that is the correct way to let the wait staff know or your hostess know that you are completely finished with your meal. Now let's discuss, let's say that you are on a business lunch or a business interview and you're not quite sure what to order. I'm going to give you some tips. If you are not quite sure whether to order the lobster, the steak, or a salad, you can always ask your host, what would you suggest? What are you having today? I know you eat here often. And that way you can tell whether your host is just going to simply have a salad or if they're going to have the salmon from the menu. Do yourself a favor and order something that's very easy and simple to eat. I would stay away from spaghetti, anything that's sloppy foods, big juicy hamburgers. Enjoy those after your interview or after your lunch interview. Go and celebrate, but don't order them for the meal across from the person that's interviewing you. It's just too difficult to eat. Something that's really safe to order is always a chicken breast. You're going to have a knife and fork. Salads are also very easy to maneuver, especially nowadays because they cut the lettuce in such small bites for you already. So just make a conscious decision before you order your meal. Again, let's visualize you are at a business lunch and you have six to eight people sitting around your table and someone in the third or fourth seat asks you to pass the salt. Do you pass the salt or do you pass both the salt and pepper shaker? And you actually take both the salt and pepper shaker and you pass it to the person on your immediate right, because remember it's the third or fourth person down on your right, and they will take both the salt and pepper shaker and pass it along. The easiest way to remember is you just pass both. You just don't pass the pepper or the salt. You take both in your hand and pass it along. Same thing goes for bread. Let's say you're sitting again at a table of six to eight people and you ask to, you're asked to pass the bread and you're the closest person. So I'm the closest person to the bread basket. And never take, if someone asks you to pass the bread, never take a roll first and then pass it along. You always pass it along immediately to the person that has made the request. Now let's say you are in the middle of a meal and you need to excuse yourself. We're all adults and we all know why we need to excuse ourselves during the meal. So there's absolutely no reason for you to explain where you're going. So you simply pull your chair out, push your chair out, and you do not put the napkin on the table. The napkin actually goes in your seat and you excuse yourself to where you need to go. Now, a lot of times restaurants will refold your napkin and put it back on the table. And we all know that that's really not necessary. Once a napkin or a fork or a spoon has been used, it never touches the table again. So as you enter the table or enter your chair, you simply take the napkin and put it back in your lap. And that is the correct way to exit a table. And just so you'll know, and this goes for both American and continental style dining, the napkin never touches the table until the very end of the meal. 
So let's say this is the very end of the meal, I'm getting ready to leave. The napkin simply goes on the table on the left hand side of your table setting. I'd like to demonstrate for you now the correct way to seat yourself at a business luncheon. So let's visualize you have six to eight people sitting around a table and it's great when everyone knows how to enter a chair correctly. And actually it should be the right side of the chair with your left hip. So let's put your left leg in, you swing your right leg around, pull the chair in to where you can seat comfortably in the center of the seat. Now let's say you need to excuse yourself during the meal. I remember earlier I told you to make sure you put your napkin in your lap, not on the table. Remember a napkin or a used utensil never touches the table again once it's been used. So to excuse yourself you just push the chair out, you get out the same way you walked in, you leave the napkin in your chair and you exit yourself from the table. I am often asked the correct way to eat soup and how to remember. And it's very easy, never hesitate from ordering soup if that's what you choose from the menu. You simply take a soup spoon, again I'm going to demonstrate here for American style. My left hand is in my lap, I'm right handed, and I simply just take the soup, whether it's a cream based or a broth based soup, and I spoon away from me, and I actually take the spoon and I pour the soup from the side of the spoon into my mouth. I know, I know, it's not the, the most fun way to eat soup, but it's actually the correct way. If you're served crackers with soup, believe it or not, you do not crumble the crackers in its package. You actually use your bread plate for your crackers. So you open the package of crackers, you take them out, you, you break off a bit of your cracker and, and you eat it individually. You never put crackers and crumble them up into your soup when you're at a formal affair or business function. Actually, this is my favorite part of the meal and that's dessert. And I especially love chocolate. So let's talk about the dessert course. When you see the spoon and the fork at the top of your plate, you know you're going to have dessert which we all like to have that. So you simply take your fork and enjoy your cake or your pie. Or if you have ice cream, there's a spoon at the top of the table setting. I love coffee and tea with my dessert. So let's say you have six to eight people and the cream and sugar are a little ways down from you. You simply ask the closest person to please pass the cream and the sugar. So once that's passed to you, another common question, when you use sugar, where do I put the wrapper? Because it can leave an unsightly mess around you. You simply take the sugar, use it in your coffee or tea, and the wrapper goes underneath, you just tuck it underneath the saucer. You stir quietly your coffee or tea, the spoon goes on the back side of the cup, and you enjoy your coffee with your great piece of chocolate. So let's say you're at a business interview lunch and you really want this job and the conversation is going very well. When it comes to dessert, what do you do? And you're the guest, so your host immediately asks, do, would you like dessert? The wait staff comes over and they may go through the dessert menu. So you can ask, you can simply ask your host, are you going to have dessert? It's perfectly fine to ask, or you can kind of take a feel as to whether your host is going to have dessert or not. If it's during lunch, probably not. He probably has a very important day plan and he needs to get back to the office. So just kind of play it out. You'll know what to do. Let's take a few moments and talk about ooh yuck situations at the dinner table that you might encounter and hopefully you're not guilty of any of these. Let's talk about chewing with your mouths closed. This is an absolute must. If not, you, you may look like a horse. It's just absolutely awful when you hear or look at someone that's not chewing with their mouths closed. So make sure you're not guilty of that. Also, ladies, you're guilty of this one. Never apply lipstick or groom at the lunch table or the dinner table. Always excuse yourself when you need to reapply or to brush your hair. Another ooh yuck moment might be, let's say you're devouring your meal, it's absolutely wonderful and you're starving, and you have something on your knife that just looks divine. 
Never take a utensil and lick your, your knife like this. That's absolutely not acceptable and very, certainly not good table manners. Another ooh yuck moment might be, let's say you're eating your green beans and tomatoes and you find something that you really don't want to eat. Let's say it might be a hair, it might be an insect. Simply put your fork and knife, if you're eating continental style, you'll notice I'm putting it in resting position. Call over someone from the wait staff and discreetly and quietly say, you know, I found something in my food. May I have another entree? And they will remove your plate. I'm sure they'll be quite apologetic and bring you something else to eat. But just make sure that you're discreet. You don't want to disturb others at your table. Life is a bowl of cherries as long as you know where to put the pits. Let's say you're an olive fan, and whether you're at a cocktail reception or you may be served olives during a meal, where do you put the pits? You actually enjoy your olive, or you may be enjoying, like I said earlier, a cherry. You take the pits, discreetly take it from your mouth, and put it on the side of your plate. Now, if you're at a, let's say you're at a garden party, and you're eating outside, and it's in the summer, and you're served or have the option of eating from a great fruit platter. If you're a great hostess, you know that it's nice to serve a single dish along a fruit platter so your guests have a place to put the pits or banana peels. We all know what it's like during flu season. No one wants to get a bad cold or strep throat. So let's say you have to attend a meeting and you have a nasty cold. In some situations, you may need to excuse yourself during the meal, and we all understand. So simply remember, you don't have to explain why or where you're going, just simply excuse yourself from the table. If for some reason you have a sneeze that you can't catch or a bad cough, just simply turn your head. You can also take your napkin, turn your head, and cough or sneeze. But never use your napkin to blow your nose. You definitely need to excuse yourself from the table when you need to do something like that. Let's say you just ordered a great steak and it was wonderful, but you have something in your tooth. What do you do? Is it okay to use a toothpick at the table? Absolutely not. Always excuse yourself and take care of it elsewhere, in the men's room or the ladies' room. You can simply ask the hostess if she happens to have a toothpick and take care of it somewhere other than the table. But never use a toothpick or your finger or your tongue to get something out of your teeth. What should you do with your cell phone? Just some general etiquette rules that'll get you through any type of business lunch or business interview lunch. An important selection on menus today actually is fish. It's quite common here in the United States to order it. So I often ask the question, what do I do if I bite into a piece of fish and I, I bite into a bone? Well, you absolutely do not swallow it. No one wants you to choke on a fish bone. So let's just simply say you have a fish bone. Discreetly pull the bone out with two of your index finger and your thumb. And you can stick it under a piece of parsley, or here is a great example, you can stick it on the side underneath a green bean. And you do it as discreetly as possible. When you're having a meal with someone, you never focus on what's not going right or was not going well. You just simply put the bone away and keep eating and keep having that great conversation that you're having. Let's say you're at a meeting and you have a briefcase, a legal pad, a cell phone, a laptop. Where should you put them? Well, they should never be on the table when you're at a business lunch. You need to wait till you're completely done as far as having something else on the table like a laptop. Simply put them underneath the table, ideally in front of you, because you don't want your wait staff to have problems with a purse or a briefcase hanging around on the floor to the right of you or behind you or hanging on your chair. So you simply can put it in, in front of you underneath the table. As for cell phones, we live in a very busy society. Never, when you're at a business meeting, have your cell phone on. If for some reason you're expecting a very important call, keep it on vibrate. You don't need to make an announcement when your call comes in. Just simply say, excuse me, and make sure you exit the building. You need to take your phone call outside so it's not disturbing others. I'm often asked, when is it okay to start talking business? Well, we have very busy lives these days, and it's my opinion, you're there for a reason. 
So as you invite a client to lunch, it's perfectly okay to ask them how they're doing, how their golf game's going, how the children are doing in school. But we all appreciate when our time is used effectively. So get through your small talk, and then it's perfectly okay to get to business. As we move through our business careers, you're going to often be asked to social situations, business parties, holiday parties. And I often see so many careers taken to a halt when we have too much alcohol at a business function. You all know your tolerance, but I absolutely would encourage you and remind you that all eyes are on you in, during this very important stage in your career. So it's my advice to it's okay to enjoy a glass of wine or have a drink, but if I were you, I would make sure that I limit it to no more than one or two glasses at a time, at a meal, or a business function. What happens if you spill something during a very important meeting? Well, we're all human, and it just happens. Let's say you knock over your iced tea goblet. The wait staff will be there to help you clean it up. Don't make a big deal about it. Certainly don't make a scene, and you don't have to go on and on with apologies. Just simply go on with your conversation as the wait staff cleans up. Now, same thing happens if you happen to spill something on your beautiful ivory suit. Don't make a big deal about it. You may dab it with a cloth, if necessary, excuse yourself from the table and keep on going. Don't complain and don't explain. Just keep on moving with your meal or your meeting. Hey guys, and there's great ties. During a business lunch, never tuck your tie into your shirt. We are all big boys now, so make sure that you sit up straight and correctly and enjoy yourself during your meal like a man. Also, another common thing that men happen to do, besides putting their tie in their shirt, your napkin never goes anywhere except for your lap. As you move into your business life, you're going to be invited to many meetings. Some of them are going to be interesting, some may not. So let's talk a little bit about your posture and your body language, because it is extremely important, and it is absolutely a part of your brand statement. When you're invited to a meeting, it's extremely important that you have good posture. If not, a few things can happen. If you lean back in your chair, you slump down, look at this. Do I look like I'm very interested in what the speaker is saying? Absolutely not. It shows that you're just not interested, that you're off in another land. It's really not a great first impression. So make sure you have good body language. You sit up straight. Your shoulders are back, you pull up out of the waist, and you engage with your audience during a business meeting. During meetings, you're often going to be offered water. If you're offered water in a bottle, make sure you ask for a plastic cup or a glass. Simply pour and drink from the glass, not from the bottle. I am often asked the top two most common etiquette mistakes that I see. And believe it or not, it is one of the powerful handshake. For both women and men, I often receive this as a handshake. And even though I'm giving him a firm grasp, it is actually not the best, most powerful handshake that I can give. In order to give a correct handshake, you must make web-to-web -web contact with the other person. It's two shakes eye contact, and that's all that's necessary for a great, powerful handshake. In your business life, you're going to be invited to many functions, maybe over lunch, maybe over dinner, in a boardroom. As of now, after seeing this video, you certainly know how to eat correctly, and you should have all the confidence in the world to move through a business meal. But it's also very important that you have the entire package and that you also present yourself with a great first impression. Always keep your bar raised here, whether you're dining or whether you're presenting yourself in a business function.